in the tank? A Queensland innovator with a product that's as Aussie as the great outdoors. Hi Sharks, my name's Tracy Bykoff. I'm here representing Far North Queensland and my award-winning product, the Original Rescue Swag. Assisting me today is my mum, Karen, and my twin sister, Michelle. I'm seeking $220,000 for 20% equity in my company. Let me set the scene for you. Imagine you're out horse riding with friends, you're having a lovely time, when suddenly disaster strikes. Your friend is thrown to the ground, her horse galloping off into the distance. You can see she's got immense pain in her arm. What do you do? You're an energy company employee. You're out on your four-wheeler checking a remote station when suddenly a brown snake launches from the long grass and strikes at your leg. You know you need compression and you need it now, but the first aid kit's back in the car on the highway. What do you do? I have the perfect solution for both these situations, the award-winning Original Rescue Swag. It is a comprehensive first aid kit that also doubles as a sling, a splint, a compression device and a water carrier. This kit is the ultimate in portability. Using the fit and forget lockdown system, you can attach it to any mode of transport without it bouncing or bumping around. By proportion and design, this kit is perfect to stow in boats and vehicles. Need to call for help? carry your mobile phone in the easy access external pocket or we can also fit you out with a personal locating beacon which is hooked up to rescue satellite networks. Sharks, I need $220,000 to boost this product to fly like a red balloon. We have a talented team, an entrepreneurial spirit and the building blocks of success. Show you've got swag, Sharks. Take a bite of this. That deserved a clap. That was very good. Well done. Great pitch. Great pitch, Tracy. Thank you. Where, where are you guys from? From Ariba. Oh, up near Lake Tinaroo. Yes, Yeah, great. nice. All right. <laughs> Queenslanders, good to hear. Yeah. So um, talk about your sales and date. So um, we started this in 2012, won an innovation award. In 2013, I put six months of my full-time effort into this and we sold $12,000 worth in 2013. 2014, we've actually sold $30,000 worth. So what is the average price per swag? At the moment, we're selling these online for $220. And what is it costing you to put them together and make them? At the moment, they cost us $100 to produce and then I need to pack them as well. However, I do now have a manufacturing solution that will halve those costs. What's the stuff that goes inside? What does that cost? Um, the stuff inside is $47.30. How much do you think you can get the other stuff down by? Um, I think I could get it down to at least 30. And you could change what you put inside Correct. by That's country what I'm too. To, yeah. Because, for example, a United States market or a exactly. European market might want different things inside it. Exactly. Tracy, what did you do before you got into this business of rescuing us all? <laughs> um, well, I've worked in a few different jobs as a teacher and a prison officer. Um, this really came about because I'm a horse rider and I didn't have a first aid kit that I could carry. It actually sits behind the saddle. It doesn't bounce around or bump on the horse, which, you know, every other solution is something that flaps around yeah. and is really annoying. So I know that there is a need for this. I'm assuming you have some sort of patent or trademark on that? Correct. It's, we have the trademark on the um, branding. Sorry. That's do you right. each Thank want you. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can pass one along, it's fine. Oh, OK. So we do have the trademark already. We are working towards the patent that covers the international sector. Yeah. Once that's approved, we can then file for different uh, countries. And so what, what's the, what's the 220000 being used for, please? Half of that amount is for manufacturing. Obviously, we need to market this product, so there's allocation for that. Patent costs will be incorporated in that as well. Are you validated over a million? How did you arrive at the valuation? I understand its potential value. I anticipate 8,000 units sold within one calendar year of launch, resulting in $1.6 million in income. Do you know what 8,000 means? Absolutely. Do you know how many a day that is? Yep, I've how done many? the cash flow. How many? And how it's many 800 day? a month. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 30 a day. I, I fundamentally don't believe you're going to hit that next year.
Have you made any large corporate sales? Have you presented to a mining company or a corporation where they bought 20, 50, 100 at a time? I've done uh, probably about 20 at the maximum. 20 um, in one bite? Correct. To value a company at that, what that means is you have to sell so many before you can return uh, the investment. It just makes it that much riskier and that much harder. On this particular construct of the deal, I'm out. OK, thanks, Naomi. You have a vision for it, which is, is all the big ticks. The valuations I do have a problem with. Sure. It's, um, it's too early to ask for that much for okay. it. It's not, it's not worth that yet. Sure. That is the only reason I'm out, but um, I will definitely be a customer of yours. Awesome. I'll be happy with that. Thank you, Janine. <laughs> I'd love to show you our new prototype too, if you'd like to have a look. This is actually the aspect that is going to eliminate the number one problem for first aiders, people panicking and not knowing what to do. If you're bitten by a snake, you can take your mobile device, scan the snake, and it will give you video instruction on what to do and which items to use as well. Uh, that doesn't actually, you know, float my boat because I think that in the areas that this may get a lot of use, that you, you, you'll have mobile coverage issues. We don't need a SIM card. You don't actually need mobile coverage when you're using it. Oh, all, wow. you, all you need to do is open the phone and scan the chip and it will take you where you need to go to the content that's pre-stored in there. You, you put that in for an innovation award. That's, that sounds really cool. Let's Pretty let's cool. dig into that. How does mm -hmm. that work? I'm, I'm, Would you I'm like a little to bit see? About, is, is it there? Is yeah. it? Oh, yeah. We'll go and have a look. It's then. just a prototype, so it's not perfect. Okay. So within this prototype, what we've done is inserted a few chips where you see the symbol. So if you scanned over the minor injury, there you go, and it comes up with the video. The content is on an SD card. In the phone? Yes. And not only does it tell you what to do, but it directs you as to which items to use. You're the first person that I've seen tell Steve something about tech that he didn't know. <laughs> I understand how it works now. I understand how yeah, it works that, now. That's, that's all right. That's <laughs> a first. <laughs> I'd be very interested in the US market. I think there's definitely a market for it there. And I haven't seen anything quite as clever as that. I've been in and around boats and horses and things. I think you're really onto something. I certainly believe in you and the product, but um, I'm a bit concerned about your the where you are in your manufacturing scalability. Sure. Ah, it's tricky. I'm tempted. I'm really stuck because for me to make this work, I'd have to take too much of your company at this point in its development. I think on the basis of that, at this point, I'm out. Thanks, Andrew. This was a fantastic pitch in terms of the Thank way you, you presented it. I love backing people as opposed to products. But the outdoors and the camping sort of area is not my specialty. I'm out. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. Steve, where are you at? I do business because it's good business. Right. I like doing business with good people. Sure. But that, that doesn't, you know, it, it, it's still good I actually work at the end of the day. To me, it's worth about 250,000 bucks at this point in time, which is not an offer you'd like. I'd love to work with you, Steve. To me, it's worth about 250,000 bucks at this point in time, which is not an offer you'd like. I'd love to work with you, Steve. So, uh, I want to try and make you an offer. I reckon I could think better if I was sitting on a quad bike. Oh, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Uh, any In excuse. Oh, it's any a toy excuse. double seater with a horse. Yeah. I Steve, could we pretend it's raining and I throw some water over you? Just to... <laughs> this, is, oh, this is cool. Here we go. Um, so the full amount, $220,000. 100000 of which will be equity for 40% of the business. The remaining 120 will be as uh, repayable on a royalty. Mm -hmm. 
at 10 bucks a unit. So he takes $10 of every product sold to pay down the 120 debt. Right. And the other 100 is for 40% 40%. of your company. Let's do it. Oh, there you go. That was easy. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thanks, Mum. Well done. Well, done. Mom, oh, you make some really so easy. And Steve, well I'll done. give you a fifty thousand dollar option for the US Thank rights. You. Oh, okay, done. All right. Look forward Thank to getting the business so going, Grant. Well, Cheers, well, Lovely to meet you all. See you. Bye. Next into the tank tonight is another well-established business that is helping today's kids become tomorrow's technological leaders. Coming on the show today, what we're really trying to do is sort of accelerate our business. I do present in front of people quite regularly. I don't usually have this anxiety just before I'm about to do that. Look, I hope they can see that we've dotted I's and crossed T's. Good evening, Sharks. My name is Frank and I'm the founder of Scope IT Education. This here is my partner and general manager of the business, Tracy. Today, we're offering an investment in our business for $632,000 for a 15% holding. Now, today's investment is not about getting a startup business off the ground. It's about helping us to continue to facilitate our growth, but maybe more importantly, to continue to solve problems for Australia's education system. It's a business that teaches kids computer science. The education system has brought this in to be mandatory over the next couple of years. They've realised that it isn't just an ancillary subject anymore. We provide a full solution for primary schools across Australia to help them facilitate their ICT education in their schools and to ensure that all their students have a literacy in digital technologies. We're a franchise business, currently 19 franchisees and four internal operational territories across five states of Australia. We've designed the program to reach every Australian child, regardless of location or social background. Every child will need this for the workforce of the future. So Frank and Tracy, you're looking for $632,000 for 15% of your company. Valuing your business at a cool $4.21 million, is that correct? That's correct. So what age range are we talking about? Our program is K, kindergarten or prep, that first year of school, so around five. Five. Right through to year eight, although we are working with year nine right. students now as well. My daughter's grade two. And I don't know whether um, it's necessary to teach her coding at grade two, considering by the time she's in grade five, whatever she learns in grade two will be obsolete. As long as she's got those underlying skills, uh, then she'll grow with the technology. It won't, it won't be useless to her. As well as that computational thinking and algorithmic thinking, because employees in the future are going to require their employees to be clever and creative using technology. And the younger we get them, the more they'll learn and absorb over time. It's a good answer. Hmm, it is a good answer. So the education department are going to make coding mandatory in schools? Uh, digital technology is mandatory, okay. and coding is right. one aspect so of it. So surely that's going to destroy your business model then? No, funnily enough, it, it won't, because what we actually do is we facilitate the, the lessons to be able to be run, because many schools just simply don't have the teaching staff, the courseware, all the hardware. We're already in 150 schools. And the level of technology that's in schools at the moment is not great. Where and how are they going to get it into their budgets? This business, really, it has a bit of a philanthropic aspect to it. It's got a social impact, which is every student should have access to these type of lessons. So we brought the price down as far as possible. Each course is one 40-minute lesson for 10 weeks. That's right. what each course is, so one term long. Yeah. Uh, so $5 per student per week or 50 for the term. A young friend of mine does uh, one of the, a program at school, and I don't know if it's your program. Are you in Scarborough? Yes. Yes, we oh, are. We are. Well, she's had incredible outcomes. She adores it. She's, How old was she? She's 12. 12. Okay. And she does, um, she did 3D printing, she did 
app development or something and she was doing gaming. So tell us about the team. How have you structured your team? Well, in, in head office, we have four executives and we're the ones who actually run the team. We have about 20 staff that help facilitate uh, the operation around the country and then we have those 19 franchisees. So just to find your profit, please, Frank. Uh, for this year, we expect to make around five, between 520 and 550,000. That's profit. Net profit. Correct. That's pretty good. Where are we going to be in three years' time? In year three, where we're budgeted at current to make 5.4 million. 5.4 million top line. What's popping out the bottom? Uh, that's 5.4 million profit. 5.4 million net profit before tax in year three. Yes. So Frank, um, we didn't run a franchise operation, we ran a franchise-like operation. So 230 pet stores, 160 veterinary hospitals around Australia. So we get used to getting performance from remote places. You do need some scaling up support. I bring absolutely nothing on the tech front, but I did do computer science in grade 11 back in whatever year I went to school. <laughs> 1902. Something like that. I'm going to make you an offer. Um, $632,000 for 39% of your company. Ow. Yeah. Frank Luchasano and Tracy Richardson have presented an excellent case for a $632,000 investment in Scope IT. Glenn's keen, but his valuation of the business is only just over a third of the original ask. Look, my offer, and throw it out there for you, on the basis of the numbers you've told us today, um, $632,000 for 39% of your company. Ow. Yeah. I think he's really, he's really trying to steal from you here, are you? Come on, Steve. Give it a break. Wait, wait one second, one second. This is once again. This is six hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars. Are you flippant with six hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars? Because if 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 he is, you should take him as a partner because he doesn't care about your business. Get on with it. Be a bit decisive. Um, congratulations on getting nineteen franchisees in two years. You know the franchise sector is very very difficult. So you're obviously doing something right. I suppose that the, where I where I struggle knowing the franchise sector and knowing a lot of franchisees out there, I don't believe that you'll be you'll be making five point four million dollars in three years. I do hope you prove me wrong. I'm out. Thank you anyway. How many franchisees is that in three years? Then uh, in the three years, well, that would actually be mostly internally run territories to reach that five point four million. Right. Uh, the, the capital we're asking for today will actually facilitate 14 more internal territories and they're much more profitable than the franchise model. You reckon if, you, if we drop in 632 grand, 14 regions, doubling the size of the business with this investment? Uh, 19 to 14, pretty close. About 14 very profitable regions because they're internally owned as opposed to 19 ones that are externally owned. Look, I think your space is clearly very appropriate. There's no debate about that. But you're only as good as your content. I think you're going to make money, but I think you've got a window of five to seven years, and then you're going to be disrupted, I think, by different models. So I wish you luck, but I'm Thank out. Thank you. Whenever I look at an investment, I also look at what value am I going to add. I think you're a very accomplished team. I think you're doing a great job. I think it's a very important piece of, um, piece of work you do. Keep going, keep growing. It's not investment for me. I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I'll make you an offer. I'll, uh, I'll... 632,000 bucks, obviously. 30%. Um, Okay, two offers, one at 39%, one at 30%. If you don't mind me asking your question then, what do you think, apart from the cash, could you actually bring to us? Not much. Um, I've had a lot of exposure to um, coding over the years. I, I, I think it's integral to entrepreneurship, so I've got a bit of a, a, a love affair with it. I have a deep love affair with getting kids to be smarter uh, and get engaged with tech. Okay. Yep. So Glenn, are you going to counter that? 
Or you I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think you need similar experience. I think you need someone who knows how to scale up a business and, and to get performance out of your franchisees uh, from a remote headquarters. You guys are expert in, in doing this, but what I'm going to assist is the coaching and the support um, in rolling out a network across Australia um, and then working out how to get performance out of that network. I'll go to my lucky number 33. 632,000 for 33%. So you have two offers on the table. So 33% from Glenn, 30% from Steve. What would you like to do? Okay, we really appreciate your offer and we think it's a, a really enticing thing to take, but unfortunately that position of equity would be a little bit too much for us to give away at this point in, uh, point in time. Steve, to your offer, we only actually have authority from our other two shareholders to let a position go of up to 25%. So we're wondering if there is something that can be done this would actually make you also the largest shareholder. Yeah, well, wouldn't it? And it'd be the first time that we've actually broken where we don't have equal shares from the business. So it is a big step for us to, to let something like this go. Mm -hmm. um... Yep, let's do it. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Oh Looking my forward to it. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. I, I can't believe it. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. That was so exciting. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that just happened. Have we seen a management, have we seen a general manager that capable of walking into this business? Next in the tank, an online innovator hoping for a shark to take a bet on his business. Hi Sharks, my name is Michael and I'm the co-founder and CEO of BetSwaps.com, the world's first sports tipping marketplace. I'm here today seeking a $200,000 investment in return for a 10% stake in the company. I want you to imagine it's Melbourne Cup Day. You might not be much of a punter, but you're heading to the races and you want to have a bet. You don't want to just pick horses at random, so what could you do? You would head over to betswaps.com where you could navigate to our leaderboard and filter by horse racing, which allows you to compare our top horse racing tipsters side by side. You can easily see their win-loss record, the profit they've made, and the return on investment you would have seen following their tips. You can then see who has tips available for sale and securely purchase these tips and receive them instantly. This allows you to bet like an expert and increase your chances of winning on the day. It's not just horse racing we cover, but more than 40 different sports and over 100,000 different betting markets. So Sharks, who wants to back a winner and join the BetSwaps team today? Yeah, sorry, Michael, I'm Stephen. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, where, whereabouts are you from? I'm from South Australia. Oh, good stuff. Adelaide or? Yeah, Adelaide. Morning, yeah, nice. I, I was determined to hate this when I saw the uh, when, I, when I saw that up there because I, I've got a real issue with the way that we've actually taken on, especially digital gambling in this country. So I don't like it at all. But this isn't that. This is tipping. Yeah, it's tipping. There's there's no betting. We are not a bookmaker at all. So this is in fact selling tips and then they go off to somewhere else and bet. Yes. So you're selling information. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Why wouldn't the existing players in the marketplace, which are the online players, yep. why don't they just do this as a side thing? So that, that's a good point, but the mentality for sports bettors and tippers is, is kind of an us first them competition thing. So if a bookmaker started this up, I think there would be that little bit of a thing in the back well, of the mind. Well, there's a conflict of interest. Yeah, it's a conflict of interest. You're supposedly helping people win, but you're making money when... Bookmakers have a terrible reputation for the way they treat their customers. It, it's yeah. really quite adversarial. Michael, how old are you? I'm 24. So you're valuing your new business at a two million bucks? Yes, that's correct. That's an interesting number. The way I look at it is we've made $100,000 in revenue this year. Oh, okay, so that's, you actually made 100K free and clear. Is 100K yep. all tip selling or is there affiliate advertising revenue yeah, in there so, at all? So we actually work very closely with all of Australia's betting companies. A lot of our revenue stream actually comes from advertising through those guys. We advertise their, their promotions, their bonuses, their markets they offer, their kind of unique quirks that they all offer to try and gain market share. And in return, we made $25,000 last month alone.
Michael. Yes. I'm really excited. Thanks. You're a tipster? Yep. Tell me what the forecasts are or your, or your bet on next year in terms of your revenue stream. But at the end of the day, what is going to be your take-home pay? So we're forecast for a million dollars in revenue next year. And One that... million dollars yep. in revenue? All right, mate. I'm in. 200 grand, 35%. Thank you for that offer. I'd like to say I'm stuck pretty firmly at 10%. Oh, you're going to be losing today, then. 35% <laughs> is, is just a bit hard. Oh, that was a quick no. Hey. You've got a good start somewhere, haven't you? Michael, you've got to remember, though, your business, you haven't really made the profit to value the... I know that there's a, a potential of actually scaling it to incredible heights, but it's potential, it's blue sky, it's, it's not reality. So, I'm out. Thank you. Anyone else got anything to add? Yes, I'm giving you 200,000 for 30%. I don't get the valuation at 2 million, but I, I would bet 200,000 on you at 30%. Uh, because I think I'd bring a lot of value and save you a lot of money in shortcuts in getting there. I was involved in a website that, that got to a, a billion and sixty dollars in seven years online. But there's a lot of traps on the way, so, uh, you know, um, slightly better than Steve's offer, but you won't get me at 10%. I really like what you're doing, but I also know that there is going to be um, bumps in the road. It's not going to be as smooth sailing as you think. Um, there is definitely going to be setbacks. So I know what I can bring to the party in terms of growing your business. I'm going to offer you 200,000, but knowing the value I will bring to your business, it's for 20% of your business. Thank you, that's a great offer. So it's pretty simple, Michael. What you have is you're a numbers man, you're a spreadsheet man. I've met plenty of people like you who are passionate, they're focused, they absolutely know the area they're playing in. 200,000, 15%. Come on now. <laughs> That's cheap. I bring more value in terms of infrastructure. There's a couple of young guys that live in Melbourne. Yep. They have the largest global trading platform for international currency. I'd like to introduce you to them. I'm the only one that's grown a website that was worth a billion dollars in the US, number one in its space. And I'm currently involved in a learning website that has 1.3 billion downloads. I'll just throw that in. You've got three sharks that want to get involved with you. Do you have a preference of who you'd like to go with? Michael Timms has stirred up a frenzy in the tank with his online sports tipping business. Steve's offer of 35% was rejected outright, but Michael still has three sharks in play. Michael, let me give you a summary of what's on the table. You have Andrew is 200,000 for 30%, Naomi's 200,000 for 20%, Glenn is 200,000 for 15%. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll even things up. I'll, I'll come back in at a... Uh, I'm going to come back. I'll, I'll reduce mine. I think I do bring a lot to this. Right, I've got numerous investments. I've got investments in the US, not, not to the scale Andy's got, but, you know, we're, we're, we're very much in digital spaces as well. So I'm willing to I'm willing to bring myself back down to, to Andy's level. That sounds wrong, doesn't it? To, to, Andy's, <laughs> to Andy's amount. No, no disrespect intended to, 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 to 30%. So you've you got two at 30 there. 30% is just too high. I can tell you right now that we're not gonna reach that number. 30% is just, just too high. Gee, he wants us, Andy. What's your counter offer? <laughs> Look, I'm gonna hold firm close to 10%. That's not much of a negotiation. <laughs> Michael, it's not dumb money you're getting. We're talking the execution risk that we're pricing in with our offers. We're not pricing in in three years. We're pricing in today and maybe a little bit in the future. But we have to price today because you might, you might balls it up tomorrow. Michael, you need to make a call. All right. Um, I'll take a bit of a, a punt and just put it out there. 
Anyone, do you want to come down to 10% and we can do a deal right now and get in early for 200,000? Anybody like to take bets on what I'm going to say next? <laughs> if you were five months down the track and had generated $500,000, but you're just too early. I like to say we've only just started looking to raise money now and since we've put out the word only two weeks ago that we're looking for money, we've had so much interest come in. So are you saying you've actually got other investors out there on the hook ready to go? Yes. They're knocking at the door waiting for the house to be built. I'll flick the 15, mate. Wow, that's a massive drop. <laughs> Steve and Glenn, would you be willing to work together? Yes, we would be. Good Sorry. Queensland backing for an Adelaide boy. Absolutely. Beautiful. Let's do it. Okay, well done. Beautiful. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done, Michael. Well done, Michael. Very impressive. I have Thank to you very much. Partner, another Thank deal done. You. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, Andrew. Hey, you know, he didn't want to go to the US. It's OK. Didn't even imagine that two would be interested, yet alone getting two on board. So yeah, really, really stoked. Do you think you've picked the right sharks? I do. I came in really wanting to get Steve, and Glenn really sold me on his value add to the business. Good luck to him. He's a good lad. And I have to say, at 24 is remarkable. I wish I could come up with an idea like that at 24. <laughs>